I'm Janine Kremsar, and welcome to Community Conversations, and we're with Chicks in the Burbs and Other Tales. This is Jennifer Desmont. Hello. Jennifer, tell us how you got involved in chicken raising. I asked my husband quite a few years ago if I could have them, and he was totally against it. I just wanted to be able to have fresh eggs for my family, and eventually I kept talking about it and talking about it, and he just said, whatever makes me happy, and it was downhill from there. Oh, what a good guy. <laughs> Uh, I got into it about 10 years ago when my kids decided that it would be fun to do a raffle out at the East Haddam Fair. And we ended up winning the raffle on Labor Day weekend. So 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm running out to East Haddam on Labor Day itself and picking up six chicks. And my husband's running to Home Depot to find something to store them all in because we didn't know what we were doing before the winter time too. So that's how we started in it. So right here we have um, store-bought eggs, and just to let you know, store-bought eggs can be up to nine months old. Over on this side here we have our fresh eggs. What kind of eggs do we have over there? We have an olive egg or egg, which is the darker green. We have an Easter egg or egg, the lighter green. And then we have a small bantam egg in the front, which is the bird that I have here in the crate. And then we have the large white eggs are your leghorns. Are my leghorns, yep. The lighter brown are her buff Orpingtons. Yep. What are the rest of them? And then we have uh, sex links. Sex links are mainly <coughs> hens, not roosters. And then we also have what they look like cracked. And we have a cracked one on the right that uh, is one of the nine month old eggs. And you can see it's a lot more watery. It doesn't hold together. And on the left side, we have one of our eggs that are only a day old and they are actually kept on a counter, not in a refrigerator. It's not as watery, and the good thing about that egg there is is that you could poach it without salt water, without vinegar, and it will all stay together. We also have different types of feed and treats and uh, mealworms and everyday feed to give to them, scratch, because it is important that chickens actually have dirt for their gizzards because they can't digest food. Tell us about your coop. What kind of coop do you have? I have a five by six coop. It looks like a mini barn. It has four windows to open in the summertime, so it cools off in there. It has the chicken door on one side. It has a human door on the other side, so you can go right in, clean it out, do what you got to do in there. It has six nesting boxes, a big roost going across, which is, I use two by fours, so in the winter they can fully lay on their toes and keep them warm. I do have little curtains in there for decoration. <laughs> She's the cute type of yes. coop. <laughs> What do you have for a coop? My coop is actually a Rubbermaid shed. Oh. Yes, it's got um, actually 12 nesting boxes, one for each girl. Yep. And then the roosting posts in there because it's very important that they are not laying on the ground at night. Right. Um, for fear of mice or raccoons or anything else to get a hold of them. We also have ventilation, which ventilation is very important for the chickens because their respiratory system is highly um, vulnerable to m different moisture levels, including ammonia, uh, the, the, uh, the mold, anything like that, any moisture that can build up inside the coop right. can affect the chickens, and chickens are very prone to respiratory diseases. You can usually tell when a chicken has a respiratory disease because their, n their nostrils actually clog up and their eyes actually uh, almost film over, and they can also have a tendency of losing feathers during that time too. Really? My chickens molt a couple times during the year, but as long as in the winter time chickens don't have any drafts inside the chicken coop, they're not going to be exposed to any, any uh, frostbite or bad weather or anything else. Chickens can last up to 30 degrees below zero on any given night or any given day in New England. Usually the brown egg layers are the, are the hardier eggs because they're northern birds, where southern birds like the leghorns um, don't do so well in the cold New England weathers. How many times a day do you feed your, your chickens? Probably twice a week. Twice I a week. have a huge, it's like a six inch PVC feeder that we built. And then I also have a couple hanging feeders, so it's just easier for me. On Sundays, we do the cleaning of the coop. We make sure everyone's got fresh, fresh water. Um, the food's filled up to the top. Mm -hmm. Every day though, I make sure they all have fresh water. That's very important. They always have to have fresh water, food supply, 
and they're let out in the let out of the coop first thing in the morning as soon as the sun comes. Mm -hmm. They're screaming to get out. Oh yes. <laughs> what special treats do you usually give to your chickens? Um, they get fresh vegetables and fruits, um, weeds from around the yard. We purposely do not fertilize the backyard, so when we mow, they get the grass. Mm -hmm. In the fall, they'll get the leaves. Um, we also give them mealworms, scratch, which I also grow in the winter as an extra treat. Anything from the garden that's mm -hmm. starting to go or anything from the inside, I'll even hard boil an egg. They'll get those, all sorts of stuff. And you know how important it is to crumble up the shells? Yes. To get back to the chickens again for the calcium. Right. The more calcium they get, the harder the eggs they get. Right. Have you ever gotten a jelly egg? Once. <laughs> <laughs> I tried saving it, but it just started shriveling. Yeah, they just kind of fall apart. The jelly eggs have no calcium, and it's a bird that just didn't get a lot of calcium that day. Right. And decides to spit it out. When do they start laying their eggs? It's usually between 18 and 22 weeks. I have had birds that started 26, 28 weeks. It all mm -hmm. depends on the individual bird. I've even had birds start at like 17 weeks. But all depends on the breed, all depends on the bird. It's kind of like with you and I when we started our. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and is it true that you don't need a rooster for a hen to lay an egg? Correct. And Not how true. often does they lay an egg? do they lay an egg? It all depends on the breed. Mm -hmm. Some chickens can lay almost every day. Some can lay twice a week. How long does it take uh, for a chicken to incubate? 21 days. 21 days. And how do you incubate them? Do you leave them with a, the hen? Do you leave them with a broody hen? You could leave them with a broody hen, or you can put them in an incubator. Mm -hmm. Obviously, leaving with them with mama is the best way and the easiest way. If somebody was to get into the business of chickens and being in their backyard, and have them as pets, where do you recommend they start looking for information? Definitely on the internet. I did a lot of research before I even started getting into them. There's some people that get into it and they don't know much information and it's not something I recommend. You should definitely look into and get as much information your, and knowledge before you start because the worst thing to do is start off and not know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And one good place to start off <coughs> is the town zoning. Yes, most definitely. There are areas in the town of Wallingford that does not allow chickens. There are some areas that you can allow up to 12 birds, depending if it's a residential area or not. And no roosters until it's five acres or more. Correct. Yep. So very important to start off with the zoning board, also with your neighbors, mm -hmm. because sometimes neighbors wouldn't be too keen in the noise that hens make. Um, hens have a tendency of squawking louder than roosters do when they lay an egg. Right. When they lay, if they see a predator. They're very loud. Right. Mm -hmm. and it's usually a domino effect. One starts it and then the next goes. <laughs> and then it's just a big party. Yep. They're definitely a lot of fun to have. They're, they do become pets after a while. And a lot of people that we know, when they start off with three, it's called chicken math. and. They say they're going to have one more, and they end up with four, and then they end up with five. They end up with multiple eggs. The difference between the two runs that you can get. A straight run is whether it's, it's going to be either a male or a female. You don't know. Or you can purchase them sexed. You can also get breeds of chickens that, are, that you can look at them and tell what they are, which is the sex links. Mm -hmm. I know the red sex link, the male's yellow, and the female is red with like the stripes. Mm -hmm. And when do, you, uh, when do you know you have a rooster? Since it is so hard to tell a lot of times what, which one is which. It's not a guarantee. I've been able to tell sometimes a couple days after hatch. Mm -hmm. Sometimes six weeks, sometimes you don't know till they're an adult. If they're an inexperienced chicken owner, when will they know? Probably when they crow. Yeah, either when they're gonna crow, either when they crow or they lay an egg. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you got a rooster or not. Right. So it's important to check for zoning. Yes. Check the internet. Number one it should be zoning. Number one, definitely Because if zoning. you don't, if you're not able to have them in your town, or, you know, what's the point? Yeah, if you can't have them in your location. <coughs> they right. are not indoor pets. Correct. You cannot make them indoor pets, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> you cannot make them indoor pets. So they are definitely outdoor pets. They are 
great in the winter time, mm -hmm. as long as there's no drafts. You do have to have some kind of skill right. with them. They're great for young kids yep. because it teaches them the responsibility of a pet, plus they get an award back from mm -hmm. the bird. Um, although it is a little difficult when you have a chicken looking at you in the backyard and you have a chicken roasting in the oven. <laughs> And you know you're going to be eating that chicken tonight, and you're looking at him out in the yard too. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't faze me. <laughs> well, that was our first shock to explain that to a seven-year-old that we are eating chicken that night, and it's out in the yard with us. Have you ever had a chicken be egg-bound? No, I have been lucky and have not. With that, that's good because it's sad. Yes, definitely. I've you know when it stories. happens. Most times when it happens. Yeah. After a molt. Oh, really? Yes. The two most popular ways for an egg-bound uh, chicken is when the egg is about to pass and it gets scared by a predator or another chicken. So the egg actually twists inside the, the, uh, the, the, the hole, okay. the cocula, uh, right after a molt. Because egg chickens don't lay during a molt. Correct. And they don't have enough protein. And the egg actually sits a lot longer inside the track. Okay. So it ends up hardening before it gets to the end and the bird ends up getting egg bound. Typically when a bird is egg bound, um, if you don't catch it right away, it's usually a death sentence for the chicken. Right. There are old fashioned ways of giving either a warm bath to the chicken mm -hmm. or even getting down and dirty and putting Vaseline right on the end of your finger and putting it right up there. <laughs> but at most times, if the egg breaks while the chicken is egg bound, the chicken dies of an infection. There's also not too many vets in the area that handle chickens. Right. You do have to find a farm vet for poultry mm -hmm. that handles poultry. So if you are going to get involved in chickens, you do have to know the air, one, no zoning. Find a vet that would be willing to take care of the chicken. There's not too many of them that will. Your neighbors, very important is the neighbors, especially if chickens do get out during the daytime, which they're apt to. Right. Uh, whether their wings are trimmed or not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get a chicken with its beak already trimmed. This way here, you don't have to worry about it pecking another chicken. Mm -hmm. If you do introduce new chickens to your coop, make sure you do it slowly because they do have a pecking order, and if you disrupt that pecking order, they're not too friendly towards that new bird. No, so it does need to be done slowly, and it's usually not a, not a good <laughs> idea to put stray chicks with an existing coop either, because they will end up right. killing the chick. And that's actually another reason why using a broody hen yeah. is better, because you can introduce the chicken, the chicks to the whole flock a lot sooner yep. than starting off with, without using the broody. Yep. Broody hens can be very mean. Mm -hmm. They're very protective, and you can usually tell when there's a broody hen when it pulls out all of its feathers from its chest so that the, it's bare skin up against the egg. And it is very warm underneath that chicken. Oh yeah. And they will attack you when you go in there for those eggs. They are mean. Yes, which is a good, good reason to get, to get ones are with uh, trim beaks on them. <laughs> what are some of your favorite things to watch your chickens do? I guess when they're out in the yard just running around. Mm -hmm. Catching the flies. Yeah, when they're stealing my blueberries from the blueberry bushes. Yep. Jumping up. Yep. They're great for that stuff. Oh, yeah. Stealers. Playing tug of war with a frog. Yep. <laughs> and they rip the frog in half. Yep. One finds a worm and they're all running around chasing that one. Yep. Yep. And you, you actually end up becoming like a Pied Piper <laughs> because they will follow you. <laughs> if they know that you have treats in your hand, Oh yeah. they will follow you. Yep. How do you call your chickens? I don't call them. If they no? escape from the run, I'll just shake the treat bag and they'll come running back in. You don't call them. No. I mean, I'll, I'll call them like, hey, chick, chick, but they don't come running for that. Well, one thing my neighbors hear all the time, and I'll even do it, is, hey, chick, 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 chick. And you watch all these things come flying across the yard. <laughs> so that's one of the ways to get them back. But usually when they know that you have a treat in your hand, they, yeah. they come running from, yeah, from wherever. Yeah, they follow. Now, what's some of the uh, common predators that you've seen around your chickens? Wood rats, mm -hmm. they can definitely, if they're hungry enough and not finding food supply, they will go after your chickens. Definitely birds from above, owls, hawks, 
our yard's completely fenced in, so we do luck out with, you know, wolves and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. anything can burrow under the fence if they wanted to. If they know there's food there, they're going to go after they're it. They're going to go after it, yeah. We've had uh, raccoons. Raccoons, I think, are mean. They typically take the head off and they leave mm -hmm. the rest of the chicken there for a few days and they come back a few days later looking for it, but by that time we've already removed it. Right. But they usually take the heads and go. We've had owls, we've had hawks, we've had a coyote. Mm -hmm. The coyote actually helped me break my ankle a few years ago when I went chasing after it. We've had fox. Uh, there are fishers mm -hmm. located on our side of town. Yep. We do have a five-foot fence, clear fence, that goes around our coop. Um, we don't have a top on it, but we do have trees that in the spring, in the summer, and the fall do cover, their branches cover over the top of it. Right. In the summertime, what special treats do you give your chickens to keep them cool? Watermelon. I'll freeze big gallon jugs of water, and I'll mm -hmm. put that in their um, water thing. I also have the hanging nipple thing, and I'll put that the gallon jugs in there so it keeps the water cooler. Definitely a lot of watermelon and stuff like that to cool them off. Mm -hmm. The run is covered, and half of it is with black. And then there's a big tree, big maple tree that shades it. So mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll even get a fan out. Cool <laughs> you off. fan your chickens. I'll <laughs> cool them off. <laughs> that I gotta see. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that I do, and um, I'm sure a lot of people know me by this, is I put in the community forums right around Halloween, mm -hmm. uh, anybody with pumpkins and gourds. Yep. And I go around and I pick them up, and because they're left outside, they freeze during the winter time. So they last all winter long, and that's an extra treat for the chickens, is pumpkins. Usually anything from a, I mean, I've had people give me these huge, gigantic pumpkins that my husband had to take out of the car because I couldn't pick the things up. And there, those, nothing's left to that pumpkin except that outer shell. Mine will even eat the outer shell. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Watermelons, I remember one time I put a cantaloupe in there, and I was wondering where the cantaloupe went. I found a little piece of the outer. And that was it? Yep. They ate all that. Yep. They're very, uh, they're, they're great with all that stuff. Great fertilizer. Mm -hmm. We've grown, we've had the birds mulch an area of the coop, and we have taken that area and made gardens out of that dirt. Right now that area is probably about four feet tall, and that's one of the things that we're going to be doing in the spring is to fill in my garden with that. And we've had cucumbers grow easily two or three feet long and very sweet, very tender from yep. what the chickens yep. produce. Probably gone through ch three chicken coops through the years. Every time we move them around the yard, whatever we've thrown to the chickens ends up growing in that area. Mm -hmm. So we've ended up getting tomatoes and corn and areas that we never even thought that we were going to have anything right. um, because they didn't pick up all the seeds. We've had mm -hmm. strawberries, we've had tomatoes, um, just anything grow in those areas where those the coop used to be. On a nightly basis, how do they know to go in? Do you put them in or did, do you nope. think they learned it after a while? They learned it after a while. After probably a week or so, they eventually went in by themselves and after that they just, every night they know to go in by themselves. Mm -hmm. As soon as the sun goes down, they're inside. Safe and sound inside. And then I just go out, put the feeders in, lock all the doors up, and they're in. You usually stop laying right around three or four years old, mm -hmm. or they at least slow down. slow down, where if they were an everyday layer, they start to slow down and maybe produce two or three a week, mm -hmm. and then one or two a week. Like a sex link. Yeah. And then they slow down altogether yeah. right around four years old, and usually about, a, usually about a year after they stop laying, they die. I've been known to cull chickens. But culling chickens can be dangerous. I've myself been hospitalized from culling chickens. So, But usually I, we only cull them if they're sick, and we know that they're not going to recover. Right. It's in their best interest. Yeah. Or um, it's time to put them in a soup pot. Mm -hmm. Now, you know that there's a difference between a meat bird and a laying bird, right? Meat birds, you cull them at around six months. <laughs> if that. If that. <laughs> That's really waiting a long time. But usually meat birds don't produce eggs, they don't walk, they eat a lot, they don't fly around, they don't flutter around, they stay in a very small area, mm -hmm. but they taste really good. 
There's a big difference between them and Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the things you need if you want to get started off with some baby chicks? Well, one thing I know you brought was a heat lamp uh, because they do have to be kept right around 95 degrees until they're ready to go outside. Good idea, though, with the heat lamp is to keep it well above the area that they're in because right. otherwise you don't want them to overheat or anything to catch on fire. And there is this mm -hmm. hook here, so I add extra chain to hold it up. Along with this clamp so it doesn't fall. Yep. And those you can get just about anywhere. Right? You can get them at Agway. You can get them at uh, Home Depot. Home Lowe's. Depot, Lowe's. You can get those about anywhere. Online. Yep. We usually start out with chicks. When we, when we do start with chicks, we usually start inside a fish tank. And we put them in a fish tank. And then this way here, you know, big 50-gallon right. fish tank. <clears throat> and then this way here, they're protected from all of our other animals. But never upstairs. They're always downstairs. Don't put them in your kitchen. Don't put them in your dining room. Nope. Don't put them in your bedroom. Don't put them in your hallway. After about a week, they do smell, even when you clean them out all the time. And they're very dusty. Yes. And feathery. Yes. Because they lose that down, and they get their feathers in right... Well, they start losing the down right around a couple of days old. Right. When they start to get their wing feathers in. And then after that, they really molt and get rid of all that down. And that causes a lot of dust. Big time. Plus, they're noisy. They mm -hmm. don't know the difference between day and night yet. Right, because of the light. Yep. Yep, so the light keeps them awake most of the time, and they scream all night long and chirp all night long, and they keep you going all night long. Me, I haven't done chicks in a few years, for the reason being is I was tired of all that mess. So I like getting chicks right around 17, 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. This way here I know already that they're hens. Right. Since a lot of places, I've, I actually bought a, a, a run that was supposed to be all hens, and nine of them ended up being roosters, and we didn't know till they were about six months old when they started crowing. So nine roosters got called at that time, but they were good. They didn't go to waste, which is very important. When you raise chickens, do realize that there can come a time that they're going to be called. Right. And, but it's also very important that no part of that chicken goes to waste. Mm -hmm. So out of respect for the bird and out of the respect for all it did for you all those years. You're going to need a thermometer, mm -hmm. chick starter, or you can also buy in a starter grower. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to need a food, or food, something to hold the food in, and then a waterer. They need to have fresh food and water at all times. Pine shavings for the bottom, that's what I use. Um, I know some people use paper towels. It's a little wasteful to me. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when a big bag of pine chips is five ninety nine. <laughs> right. That's about this big. Yeah. That's and those cheap. you can get at the feed store. Yep. All of this you can get at the feed store. Oh, yeah. And it's becoming more popular, too. Um, I do like driving around town, seeing people starting to do it um, and get involved with it because it is, it is a way for sustainability and uh, self-sustainability and not relying. Um, I remember a TV show quite a few years ago that actually did a show on chicken eggs. And I, that's where I learned a lot of the material, how a store-bought egg can be up to nine months old by the time you buy it and bring it home. It's actually <laughs> not as healthy as a day-old or even a week-old egg that we might get. Right. Uh, because the artificial light on a store-bought egg decreases the vitamin D and the vitamin E in an egg, which makes the cl bad cholesterol levels go up. Mm -hmm. When you do see dirt on an egg, all that means is, is that the egg wasn't washed off yet. And why don't you wash an egg? Because then you'll get to take the bloom off of it. And what happens when you take the bloom off of it? If you take the bloom off, then you risk the fact of bacteria getting inside of it. And then you have to refrigerate it. Correct. When you wash an egg. Right. Other than that, as long as that bloom is on it, it's a good thing to see some mud or some poop on it because then you know that bloom is on it. You don't have to refrigerate an egg. Right. And that uh, refrigerating an egg is actually as what we're called in from other countries is actually a Westerner thing. Mm -hmm. Because in Europe and so forth, they don't refrigerate eggs. Yep. I do refrigerate mine just because mm -hmm. I don't want them on the counter. But they're never at my house longer than two days. Because mm -hmm. I do happen to sell my extras. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing to always sell the extras. This way here, they don't go to waste. Right. The bloom, you really can't see. We're on a store-bought egg. They are washed off. And they are refrigerated. And yes, I will not be eating these store-bought eggs. 
Uh, I can't eat a store-bought egg. You can't force me to eat a store-bought egg after eating real day-old chicken eggs. There's a huge difference in taste, texture, uh, just the looks. It's funny when you do feed them certain things that the egg will look that way too. Like if you feed them too much pumpkin, they turn orange. Mm -hmm. Feed them too much blueberries, the shell turns blue or it'll have blue streaks going through it. I don't know if you ever noticed that. I haven't. I've noticed it yeah. in their poop. But. Yeah, in their poop, yes. Their poop always has whatever they eat, yes. But uh, that, that poop is actually very good fertilizer as long as it's mixed properly with dirt because mm -hmm. the pH levels can be a little bit higher. It's a, it's a great experience for little kids mm -hmm. because little kids, they, they can have the chicken, they can play with the chicken even, but then they get a reward at the end mm -hmm. when they play with the chicken every day. And I've, I've had a lot of friends' kids come over and walk right into the chicken coop and get the eggs out themselves. Yep. They actually enjoy it. They think it's the funniest thing in the world. I have lots of pictures of kids coming over, sticking their hands underneath. Some are a little shy. They don't like sticking their hand underneath. But other than that, they'll, they'll definitely uh, go in there and get them. And I give them the eggs. I don't, right. you know, I don't keep them because that's, that's their treat. One funny thing that I see all the time is when inside the egg, when they eat too many worms. Oh, I haven't seen that. You haven't seen that yet? <laughs> oh, yeah. And my husband sits there and he tries to take it out because he thinks it's disgusting. It's a piece of worm that sits inside the egg. <laughs> <laughs> when they eat too many worms or they eat too many grubs or anything else, you will see pieces of it pass on to the egg. It doesn't hurt you. You take right. it out. You get rid of it. That's all. Um, if it's a heavily soiled egg, though, mm -hmm. you do want to wash it before you crack it open. Right. Or I'll even use those for giving to my dog. I'll steam those, give them to my dogs. Mm -hmm. I'll give them back to the chickens if they're just too bad. Or if one's cracked, instead of wasting it, I'll just steam it and give it back to them. Yep. So if you could do this all over again, would you? Absolutely. I'd probably start, though, a little bit differently. You know, not getting them as a surprise, so I'd be better prepared. Right which preparedness would be including, again, talking to zoning, yep. making sure you're in the right zone, making sure your property um, will handle the chickens, mm -hmm. that it's healthy enough for the chickens. Your neighbors. Your neighbors. What I mean by healthy enough for the chickens is um, you don't want a heavily fertilized lawn through the years because the chickens can get sick off the, the pesticides and the, and the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. But they're great um, grub killers and... Ticks. Hunters of ticks and fleas and um, all that stuff. But I would definitely do it again. I'd probably buy a bigger, bigger yard to have more of them at this point. Yes, you can have more. Yes, yes, that chicken math again. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I would definitely, in the same thing, I would start off with a much bigger uh, piece of property mm -hmm. so I could have more. I think, too, I would also find somebody that is knowledgeable in it before I started off because when I started off, there really was no vast use of Google and the Internet, mm -hmm. and I kind of winged it in the beginning. Right. I would search for somebody that local, too, that, that knows right. about them. You know, it's nice now with the Internet. but And you're never done learning. There's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. So that's it. For more information, you can check us out at the Wallingford Chicken Ladies on Facebook.